What's up guys? I'm going to show you how to warp inside Ableton Live, which can be a little confusing at first when you first start getting into it, but don't freak out with it. Um, there's a lot of different options that Ableton gives you for taking audio and chopping it up to sync it in time to be able to use it however you want for remixing. A lot of artists move to Ableton just for the warping feature alone. Uh, because everything in Ableton wants to be perfect in time with itself to match up with the project BPM that we have. Right now it's set at 95 BPM. However, if I wanted to drop a song into Ableton uh, as an audio file, Ableton is going to start warping it aut automatically right away to try to lock it into time with the project tempo. But one thing I recommend is going to Live's Preferences and the Record Warp Launch tab on the left there is this one feature that says auto warping long samples. And I turn that off because anytime you drop in audio that's longer, Ableton's automatically going to try to warp it and sometimes can throw a little bit out of time and can get kind of weird. So generally, I would recommend turning that off, especially for this exercise and just warping audio in the future to remix a track or whatever you're trying to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my finder window and in my downloads folder on my computer, I'm going to grab this audio track. It's a song called uh, Let You Go by um, Ember Island, which was also remixed by Elenium, and she has a beautiful voice. So I'm going to remix this track, and I'm going to drop it in just like that into an audio track. So Ableton automatically didn't try to warp this. Normally, if that feature that we just turned off was on, you'd see all a ton of different warp samples across the top, a bunch of different warp markers. First thing I want to do is kind of figure out what is the real original tempo and timing of the audio that I dropped into the project. On the left, there's something called a segment BPM, and that's a reference point. Ableton's basically taking a guess at what it thinks the original tempo was for this, this piece of audio that was dropped into this audio track. So right now it says 120 BPM. And the project we have is at 95, so we want to get this song to eventually warp into 95 BPM or whatever we want. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take the start marker in this audio clip, and I'm going to try to find the downbeat. I want to find where the one is. And oftentimes the best way to find that is to find a kick drum if it's available. So I'm going to use my eyes and find where I think maybe that downbeat is. And I'm going to hit play, turn the metronome off, and there's a tap tempo feature up here next to the BPM, and I'm going to tap the rhythm of the song and try to figure out what it is. So it looks like it might be closer to 105. So I'm just going to type in 105. It's my best guess. And I'm going to right click on the start marker and choose set 1.1.1. And that's saying to Ableton, this is the first beat of the first measure of the song. Now turn on the metronome and kind of use my ears and listen to see if it's close. And it sounds pretty close. I think we got it. So you'll notice because the clip is warped, now it's going to show the segment BPM as 105 because we locked it into Ableton's tempo now. If I want to make sure the song's really warped, then um, I'm going to take my cursor towards the top, so it's a little speaker icon, and then when I click, it's going to start playing on the clip's timeline. And I'm going to listen farther down the road to make sure it doesn't get off. So for the most part, it was on, but down here, Ableton created a couple extra warp markers here at the end, these yellow dots, because Ableton thought it was getting out of time, so it tried to correct it and ended up throwing it out of time a little bit. So if I'm positive that I know what the original tempo is of this song, then we have different warp options by right-clicking on the start marker. And one of the options um, is warp from here. And Ableton just threw in a bunch of warp markers. And what it's trying to do is to perfect it. And sometimes I can throw it off and mess it up. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, we have another option. We can choose warp from here, start at 
X BPM and Ableton is only going to warp to the right of the start marker at that point. And it's going to drop in, it's going to do a very similar thing. It's going to drop in uh, warp markers and try to create uh, changes to any mistakes that might have happened if the tempo gets off based on our project tempo. The next thing we have is warp from here straight is Ableton is going to set one warp marker and it's going to lock it in right there and everything to the right, it's not going to touch. It's just going to be, it's just going to be locked in there. And then you're just telling Ableton, this is the first beat of the first measure. Everything to the right needs to be untouched. And when you're hundred percent sure that the original song BPM is what you have the project tempo at, then that's a great option because especially if somebody sends you a mix or you know the song's original tempo, then you can just type in Ableton's tempo and set it to 105 BPM and then do warp from here straight. Um, and that's going to be your best option if you really know what the tempo is going to be. So without doing the extra work that we just did, that's a great option. Um, the option below that is also very similar in basically creating no warp markers to the right. So I'm going to choose warp 105 BPM from here because we're I'm 100% sure that's the original tempo of the song. And now you can see everything to the right is clean. There's no more warp markers. And if we got it right the first time we try to warp something, then if there's no tempo change throughout the song, I can just take my start marker and pull it all the way back to the beginning. And Ableton is going to um, lock in the timing with the background of the grid so everything should be timed up perfectly fine and I could pull the start back start marker back and start playing anywhere um, and use my eyes to read the the measure count at the top and you can use your eyes a lot of time in the background grid with the numbers just to see if the audio waves are lining up with the grid so now it should be good So now I don't necessarily need the metronome, so I can turn it off. It just kind of gets annoying. And what I can do is now that the clip is warped, I can speed up or slow down Ableton's project tempo, and the song is going to follow. The audio clip is going to follow whatever the tempo is that I move. And now I can maybe add things around it. Uh, I can add a drum loop. I can drag other instruments into the project and play around it. So let's go into here. I have a splice folder. Splice is an amazing sample library. Um, it's called Splice Sounds. Recommend you take a, take a look at that. Build out your own samples if you want. So I just dragged and dropped a drum loop into a new audio track. And now they should play perfectly together because they're timed up in Ableton's tempo. So another thing to note is we can create new warp markers and stretch out the timing of individual notes or pieces of the audio just by double clicking towards the top. So just by double clicking, you see that there is a new yellow warp marker. And you'll notice if you get close enough, there's all these tiny little gray dots. They're like super small and they look like grayed out warp markers. These are what you call transients. And that's Ableton's way of recognizing that there is an instance of audio that is happening. And that's what a transient basically is. It's just the initial attack of a piece of audio that is occurring at a certain period of time. So I can double click and re remove warp markers. Um, there might be a case where you have a song that was not recorded to a metronome or to a click. And this example made it easy because most electronic music that is produced is obviously recorded into some kind of time frame using a metronome. Sometimes you'll have um, somebody singing to their phone or you have somebody just playing guitar and they send you a recording and it's not recorded to a tempo. Um, then Ableton makes it pretty easy for us to create warp markers and stretch out the timing of audio to lock it into the time that we want it to be. So what I'm going to show you is, say I take the start marker down here and I pretty much have everything timed up, but maybe I wanted to loop a certain section. Um, say I just wanted to loop maybe this part of the background. So I'll just highlight it and I'll just loop four bars. And if I hold down Command L, it's going to snap the loop bracket into wherever I highlighted in the back grid. Never gonna let you go. Never gonna let you go. 
So maybe in this loop, I don't want the g to be there. Maybe I just want it to cut off on u. And so I can have that phrase with cutting off the end of go. So what I would do is I'm going to want to keep and preserve the timing of everything else in the entire clip and not throw it out of whack by creating a new warp marker and moving stuff. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll set a new warp marker there on the start marker. So it'll lock this part of the clip into time. And then I can do the same thing at the end of the loop. And now notice if I move that warp marker, it's stretching and adjusting the timing of everything. And I don't necessarily want to do that because that'll throw everything off. Right, and it'll throw off the timing of the background grid and it won't be in the timing of what I originally intended. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to create a warp marker before and behind a new warp marker I create so I don't throw the song off. So I've got this warp marker locked in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I want to preserve this part where she says you. And now the U starts there, but I don't want that part to necessarily stay in at the very end where it says go. So if I'm going to duplicate this clip and use it for other purposes, I don't want to throw everything off back here because I might end up using it in other clips. So what I'll do is I'll preserve by creating a warp marker back there. And now, because I created a warp marker before and after that warp marker, we're safe, and now I can create a new warp marker and pull the audio to get go out of there. Anything to the far right of the warp marker is going to stay unaffected, and anything to the left is going to be unaffected as well. So let's hit play. And now you'll notice that if you stretch audio too far, it sounds really grainy, like someone poured sand on it, and it reduces the quality of the audio, and it sounds a little distorted. So you got to be careful how far you stretch the audio. So I'm not going to stretch it super hard. Maybe what I'll do instead is I'm going to stretch it in smaller increments. So I'll create a couple warp markers and kind of drag it over a little bit so it doesn't sound so stretched and crazy out of whack. Never gonna let you, never gonna let you, never that sounds way better. Let you. So now I get the go part out of there. And I can continue to have that loop and phrase going over and over at some point in the song. Maybe I'll add some sends, like my reverb or some delay. And now I can duplicate that clip. And I'll change the color to let me know that this is a new part. And I'll take the loop, mar the loop bracket somewhere else. And I'll find a new part that I maybe want to capture and grab and start piecing together different audio clips. Maybe I'll stretch it a little longer. And now I've got a cool part. And maybe I'll move that to a new audio track so now I can play both of these at the same time. So hopefully you get an idea of how to warp audio, um, how you can take an existing clip and uh, maybe move it around and create a new clip out of that clip that's already warped and start arranging these clips and, and ideas into new scenes and start building out a song that way and taking pieces and snapshots of audio to create a remix. Mm -hmm.